Hello everyone and welcome to Dutch Greybeard. I like the videos Bookpilled puts out and I hold his view on science fiction works in high esteem. If you want to check him out, he's in the link down below. His occasional rants against Robert Heinlein surprised me though. It is not that I find every book of Robert Anson Heinlein amazingly fantastic. But overall, he is and remains one of my favorite writers of all time. Probably for all the elements that Bookpilled hates in his writing, like his wittiness and his fast-paced thinking. I'm quite sure that my favorite Heinlein character, Jubal Harshaw, will irritate Bookpilled beyond measure. So perhaps it's just a matter of taste. Nevertheless, Bookpilled's latest rant inspired me to make this video. I do not discredit Bookpilled's reading experience of Highline. I mean, everyone has got his own experience, right? I just want to present mine here as a sort of counterweight. I will show you all the Highline books that I read. I won't bother you with an extensive outline or reading experience of every book. Just a few words for each book and I'll highlight only a few to illustrate my appreciation of this writer. I started reading his works in the late summer of 2010 because of a passionate recommendation from a friend of mine. From August of that year until February of 2015, I read 36 of his books, if I didn't miscount. I also read the excellent biography written by William H. Patterson, Jr. These are the two volumes that make up this very good biography. So I believe I am what you can call a fan. So the first one I read is Revolt in 2100, which is a sort of a 1984 a la Heinlein. I remember that I needed to get used to Heinlein's way of writing, but I instantly liked his dialogues. At that point, I was not yet won over, but pleasantly surprised. In this same volume is the second book I read, of course, and that is Methuselah's Children. This one really got me on board of the Heinlein wagon. This story, where I got to meet Lazarus Long for the very first time, convinced me of Heinlein's mastery. The next book I read is The Door into Summer. The title alone rings to me as one of the best book titles ever. Protagonist Dan Davis has a cat called Petronius the Arbiter, or Pete for short. During winter time, Pete tries all the cat flaps that Dan's house has, starkly believing that one of them has to lead to summer. There's time travel, there's intrigue, which leads to a surprising finale. In this book, I got familiar with Heinlein's crafty metaphor writing. Two examples of that. Time travel was about as practical a solution to my difficulties as cutting your throat to cure a headache. Mr. Powell loved me the way a croupier loves a sucker who keeps playing the zero. The next book I read, Stranger in a Strange Land, turned me into a lifetime fan of Heinlein. I did a mini review on my second best book of all times video. You can check it out. This one holds spot number 10 on my top 22. I also read his juveniles some out of obligation and others because I really enjoyed the story. In most of his books for a younger audience, Heinlein's philosophical streak is almost non-existent, which makes them less interesting for me altogether. The next juveniles didn't do very much for me. Farmer in the Sky, Space Cadet, The Rolling Stones, Red Planet, Have Spacesuit, Will Travel, peculiar title, and Podcane of Mars. This last one is mainly a strange book. It's obvious to me that writing these books were a chore for Heinlein. However, some of his juveniles I really enjoyed a lot. There are 
Tunnel in the Sky, Starman Jones, The Star Beast, as long as there's star in the title, it's probably good for the younger readers at the time, Citizen of the Galaxy, Time for the Stars, and Between Planets. Now that we've got those out of the way, let's move on to his adult novels. Double Star. I like this one very much. As in much of Heinlein's work, the science in this novel is very outdated. Standard equipment for the entire crew of a spaceship is a slide rule. And a large archive consists of kilometers of microfiches. He wasn't very good on the science. Next, The Puppet Masters from 1951. Also a very good read. This is one of Heinlein's other strengths. His books are all very easy to read. The story is nice, without exception, and his language is not very highbrow. This book is Heinlein's version of an alien invasion, and underneath the story lies the theme of dignity of the individual. This book is a page-turner. It's humoristic, and there's a message. But Heinlein remains first and foremost a storyteller. Or, to put it in Heinlein's own words, the trick in sermonizing through fiction is not to let your sermon get in the way of the story. The latest book-pilled rant concerned this novel from 1969, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. I agree with a lot of his criticism of this book. The main POV is Manny, who talks without articles or pronouns, which makes it very tough to read. Again, the main theme here is regaining freedom through revolution, one of Heinlein's main themes. A good story in a flawed wrapping. One of Heinlein's most famous novels, no doubt, is Starship Troopers from 1959. The first hundred pages made me think back on the movie An Officer and a Gentleman, when protagonist Johnny Rico, at the start of his military training, complains that his outfit is too big, his officer shuts him up with the words, there are just two sizes in this army, too large and too small. Heinlein addresses questions like, can violence really be a solution to anything? I most enjoyed the scenes where Johnny's old schoolmaster, Mr. Dubois, takes the stage. The war against the alien bugs, for me, was secondary. I have some mixed feelings about this next one. I Will Fear No Evil from 1970. The story about how 90-year-old Johann Sebastian Bach Smith has his brain transplanted into the body of Eunice, his most beloved secretary, who was killed in a theft, is wonderful. But this book is too slow-paced to be enjoyable all the way through. If he had skipped 200 of the now 500 pages, it would have been much better. Apart from that, the protagonist again is a typical Heinlein character, filled to the brim with cynicism and wit. The inner dialogues between Smith and Eunice are also very entertaining. I'll bet you've never prayed in your life. Oh yes, I have, dearest, but God had gone fishing. Next up, Time Enough for Love. From 1973, this one evoked similar mixed feelings. The pacing is very slow and the beginning seems to be written by a dusty archivist. But again, the story and some of the themes Heinlein tackles here are amazing. I will spend a few more minutes on this one. We meet Lazarus Long again in the year 4200. On the back of it says his living dates, which is 1916 until 4272. We don't know what he died of. That's related nowhere, as far as I can tell. Anyway, Lazarus Long is a legend. He's one of the oldest people on Earth. He once decided that he would not die. But at the time of this story, Lazarus is tired. Because of his legendary status, his suicide button 
has been removed from his apartment. Lazarus is outraged when he discovers this. The main theme, death or living eternally, is wonderfully explored here. In a way, this book is somewhat of a jumbled mess. It is as if Heinlein threw together the various unpublished pieces about Lazarus Long he had written over the years into one book. On the other hand, precisely because of the unconventional composition and content, you can see it as a masterpiece. Even if the framework in which the stories are told is a bit thin, the stories themselves are all masterpieces on their own. And all of Heinlein's ideas about the organization of a society, free thinking, free love, and much more are amply discussed. This book, once again, provoked me that Heinlein is an institution in itself. As one reviewer put it, if you decide to read him, you will have to do it on his terms. And so it is. He makes laws of life and laws of writing. His creativity in this regard is limitless. His latest novel, To Sail Beyond the Sunset from 1987, consists of the memories of the mother of Lazarus Long, Maureen Johnson Smith Long. This book is mainly, again, about freedom with regard to society, human relations and so forth. I also read some novels that didn't really impress me very much, so I'll skip through them real quick here. I'll also mention the books here that I never wrote a reading experience about. I don't remember enough of those to say something worthwhile. Sixth Column is one of those I regard as not a fully-fledged Heinlein novel. For us, the living. Then there are some story collections, which I'll show quickly and then move on. The Man Who Sold the Moon, which is also in this volume, but this is mainly for orphans of the sky. Then we have The Green Hills of Earth and The Menace of Earth. The Fantasies of Robert Heinlein. There are some very nice, very nice stories in this one. And we have Requiem, which is partly written by Heinlein and partly written by other people. Expanded Universe. And finally, Assignment in Eternity. I even DNF'd a Heinlein once, namely The Number of the Beast. My friend who recommended Heinlein to me was adamant in stating that this was the ultimate best book Heinlein ever wrote. It sat on my bookshelves for a long time where it matured like a good wine until I finally decided to immerse myself in this piece de resistance. I struggled on until page 300. In the margin, I wrote things like more suitable for mathematicians, or enough already with the witticism. This book is mainly filled with references to... Exactly, to what? If the references are unfamiliar territory, the whole book misses its mark. At least, that's what it did for me. One of his most spiritual novels is Beyond, the Hor Beyond This Horizon. It's one of his very early ones from 1942. I enjoyed this one very much. One of his most peculiar novels is Glory Road, which may best be categorized as fantasy instead of science fiction. Heinlein always said that he wrote speculative fiction, which is as good a term as any. This is also one of my absolute favorites by this amazing author. These last years, Heinlein has not been on my radar so much anymore but I have more than fond memories of reading him. Recently, inspired by Book Pill's aversion of Heinlein, I picked up Grumbles from the Grave with this wonderful Michael Whelan cover. This is an edited collection of his letters. And I have four more books 
that have been slumbering on my bookshelves, which I will probably pick up one of these days again, inspired by Bookpilled. These are The Cat Who Walks Through Walls. Nice, t nice title. Job, A Comedy of Justice. And Friday. And finally, Tramp Royale. This final one isn't a novel, but a travel memoir that he didn't publish during his life. I would like to finish this Heinlein tribute with my second favorite novel of his, which is Farnham's Freehold. It was published in 1964, my birth year, and it covers topics like racism, totalitarian societies, freedom, incest, just to name a few. During a nuclear attack, Hugh Farnham and his family hide in his self-built bomb shelter. They miraculously survive, as does Hugh's cat, Dr. Livingstone, I presume, or Duck for short. When they finally emerge from their shelter, they enter a completely untouched natural landscape, abandoned by humans. We follow this group of people during their attempts to rebuild their lives in this strange new world. They eventually learn that the nuclear explosions have transported them 2000 years into the future. Humans live in a highly hierarchical culture where uneducated or castrated whites serve as slaves. A wrong word or wrong inflection can cost you your head and in the worst case your body ends up in some meal. Cannibalism is the most normal thing in this world. Heinlein's name has often been associated with racism as if he were propagating it. I find that very hard to believe. Heinlein was a free thinker and someone who took pleasure in turning the world upside down. His books most certainly provoked many readers back in the day, and nowadays as well, obviously. Farnham's Freehold is not about black versus white, but masters versus slaves, regardless of race. Book Pilled mentions several times that Heinlein is a misogynist as well, to his opinion. I wouldn't know, but knowing Heinlein as I do, I find that highly unlikable. My impression of his view on women is more woke than many give him credit for. Because of his provocative characters, I would say that Heinlein is often misunderstood. Farnham's Freehold offers the lightning fast witty wordplay that Heinlein has patented. A beautiful comparison emerges when Farnham tries to explain one of the characters that his resistance against the 1984-ish dictatorial regime is futile. If a grasshopper tries to fight a lawnmower, one may admire his courage, but not his judgment. So, this is my Heinlein tribute. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again at Dutch Greybeard. Enough already with the 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 with